Hello and welcome. Today we will be creating this Power BI dashboard in under 18 minutes using data extracted from Jira with the IonaFX Business Intelligence Export plugin. Let's get started. The first thing we need to do is get our data. So I'll launch Internet Explorer and browse to my Jira site, which is right here. I'll log in with my credentials. And I'll open up any issue just to get a quick link to the Reports tab over here. There it is. Scroll down to my business intelligence export tool and click on it. Now I'll enter dates for a time period in which I'm interested. And that is January. I'll click next. And as soon as the date is ready, I'll get a selection of formats in which I can download it. I'll choose spreadsheet, save that. And that's all we need to do in the browser. So I'll close it. Next, I'll launch Power BI Desktop so we can start building our dashboard. Once it's loaded, I'm going to click on the Home tab. I'm going to click on the Get Data and select Text CSV as my format. I'll go to my Downloads folder and double click the data that we just downloaded. And I'll choose the Load. And this will load all my data into a model and display it over here as a table. It does have a long name. The name matches the name of the CSV file. And I'm going to shorten that to make it a little easier to work with. I'll just call it Records. Let's start things off by setting the basic theme for our dashboard. The stock themes are pretty nice. There are quite a few of them here in Switch Theme. But I've created a custom theme that's just a JSON file containing a palette of colors that I think will look good. Now you might actually disagree with me on that, so I'll show you how to do it here. I have the JSON file in brackets. And this is a very simple file. It's just got a name, some data colors, background, foreground, table accent. The key to it all is data colors here. That's where I selected three colors that were close to each other on the color wheel. And I just took five shades of blue, five shades of purple, five shades of green, and loaded their colors right in here. So that's it. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and import that theme. I'll go back to the Home tab, Switch Themes, Import Theme. And now I'll navigate to my themes file themes starship plus it'll take a second and then the theme was imported successfully now the first thing that i'd like to see on my dashboard is the amount of work logged by each developer to do that i'll use a donut chart so i'll click that in my visualizations pane and my data source this records it actually is a three for one i get comments data i get issues data and down at the bottom here I get work logs data and the way that I differentiate between what type of data I'm getting is by a record type column so I'll filter by record type and I just want the work log entries so this is work logs issues and comments so I'll select W for work logs now I'm also going to add another filter here for project name we won't use this one so much here but later on we'll use this in a slicer so for now, I'll just add it and say select all. Now up at the top here, we need to group uh, work logged by the developer. And that is the work log author is the person who recorded the work. And then the amount of time that they claim they spent working is work log time spent. I'll put that into values. And there we have our donut chart. I'm just going to move it over a little bit here down a little bit so we can see it and I'm going to do some formatting changes to it. I'll start off with details and I want to use white. That'll make them disappear for now because it's a white background. Display units auto, size 9, everything else there looks good. I'll collapse that and go down to title. Here we need a different title. We'll call this um, work logged by developer. My font color can be white again. Background color will be a dark blue. You know what? Maybe a slightly less dark blue. I'll put it in the center. I'm going to boost the text size so we can see it up to 14. Everything else looks good there. My background for this control though, I do want to have a background. And this I want to be a nice dark blue. And the transparency can be zero. 
Next, I'd like to do essentially the same thing for work logged by project. And I'll show that as a tree map using the work logged as sort of a proxy for the size of the project. Again here we're going to take record type and move it down to a visual level filter and we'll select work logs again because that's where we get our time logged. And I'll bring project name in again so we can use it in the slicer later. And for now I'll just set it to select all. So this is going to be grouped by project. So in the group pane here I'm going to drag project name. And then in values we'll put time spent. There we go. Time to do some formatting on this. We'll start off with the data labels. Let's turn those on. The color, I think it's already white. I'll just make sure of that. Text size needs to be a bit bigger. 13 looks good enough because I'm actually going to stretch this control. There we go. That'll work. Now let's look at title. Again, I don't want the stock title there. I'm going to call this project size. Font color can be white. Background color will be a middle blue. Center alignment, and we used 14 for the other control, so I'll put that at 14 as well. That looks good. And lastly, I do want to turn the background on here, even though we can't really see it too well behind a tree map, but I'll make it the same as the other background. Next up, we use voting on issues to determine their priority for entering into our development process. Therefore, I'd find it useful to know ahead of time what issues are likely based on their high vote count. And to do this, I need to filter my issues uh, for just those that are in the to-do status and then count up the votes that each of them has. Now, I'd also like to see the average number of votes to get a better sense of interest in some features versus their peers. So I'll need to calculate that average number of votes. And I'll do that by adding a column to my table. I'll right click my table name and say new column. Now to do this I need to filter for issue rows. Um, first I'll give it a good name. We'll call it average votes equals I'm going to filter by record type I and then I'm going to filter by and filter those results by whether they have an issue status of to do and then I'll average up issue votes on that. So let's start at the outside. Average I'll use the average x function for this, and then I'm going to have two filters, filter, filter. So my inner filter will be on the records table, and I want from the records table things that have a record type equal to i. Now I'll take that filter statement as my input to the next filter, which is going to be on records issue status equal to to do. Now with both of those filters uh, bringing down a small set of records for me, I want to take out of that small set of records the average of issue votes, which is records issue votes. We'll accept that. And we should see a new column get popped up. There it is. We have an average votes column. With that in place, I can create the visualization that I really want for this, which is a stacked column with a line, line and stacked column chart. I'll click that in visualizations, move it over there. So I've got quite a few filters that I need to put onto this one. I need to do the same filtering that I did in my average, which was based on issue status. to do and record type is issue so the I records and then I also want project name pulled into this I'm putting it on all of these and I'll set it to all for now now let's go up and populate this now I'm going to use uh, I need a unique identifier for issues and issues have an issue key we also have an issue ID, but key is a little bit more friendly to understand. It's a thing like dev1 or dev2 instead of just a number, which is the issue ID. It's an internal Atlassian JIRA number. Now I have two values that I can put. Column values, I want to be my issue votes. 
So I'll drag that over to column values. And then the line value that goes across them, I want that to be the average votes. So I'll go all the way up to the top, grab my new column, and drag that to line values. Now I need to format this chart to make it look like the others. So I'll go over to my paint roller tool. And we'll start off with the x-axis. The color for this, I just want it to be white because I'm going to put that dark blue background on it. The y-axis, the same thing here. There's white. Text size 11 makes sense. Everything else looks pretty good there. I'll close that off. And next up is the title, the one we change on everything. I'm going to call this new feature interest. Text color will be white. Background color, I'll make that the middle blue there. Alignment center, text size goes up to 14 to match the others. And lastly, we want to put a background on this. So I'll turn my background on. I'll go for my pretty dark blue on zero transparency. Oh, I have a legend on this. I don't need a legend. Legend off. Now next I'd like to see the status of my issue pipeline, like how many tickets are in each status to do, selected for development, in progress, etc. And a funnel chart seems to be a decent way to show where my pipeline is bulging. So over in my visualizations panel, I will choose a funnel chart, drag it over here, and issue status is on issues. So I want records that are issues, there's record type. Visual level filter, and I will select I for issue. And then again, we're going to drag project name in and just set it to all for now. I'm going to group these by issue status. So I will drag issue status to group. And the value for this, I need that unique identifier again, and I'll use issue key. I'll drag that down to values. That's pretty good. Let's do some formatting on this. I'll start off with my category labels. I'll make those white. I'll go down to my data labels and I'll make those also white. And my title, where's the title? There it is, title. We'll call this issue pipeline. Font color will be white. Background color will be uh, middle blue. Alignment center, text size 14. And then we'll take care of our background as well. I'll turn it on and say we want a dark blue with a transparency of zero. That's our issue pipeline. Let's move some things around just a little bit here. Make these a little bit wider. I'd like to interact with this dashboard to do things like pick a project and see who's worked on it in the developer donut here, or view what this project's issue pipeline looks like. Which means that here's where we finally add a slicer that will make use of that project name filter that we've been adding to every single chart. So from the so first I'll click off into a blank area here, and then I'll go over to my visualizations pane and find slicer. I'll give it a little bit of sizing right now. Put it all the way along the side there. And the field for this is going to be project name. And on our paint roller tool here, we want to manage these selection controls a little bit. I do want to be able to select all projects, and I don't want to be forced just to have one project selected. Now all the items that are displayed in my list, I want those to be in white like everything else on my dashboard and my title. I'll turn title on. I'll say choose projects and I'll make the font color white.
the background color will go middle blue. I'll leave the alignment left for this one and I'll boost the size up to 18 because this is going to be an interactive part of the dashboard. You know what, I'm going to change my, I want the interactive part of my dashboard to look different so I'm going to make it the very darkest blue that I have. And then the background for this, I will turn background on and I will set it also to the darkest blue with a transparency of zero. So that's our slicer. Let's try it here. I'll select App Dev, Architecture and Art. All my charts are changing. I'll select a few more. It works. Lastly, we should add a title to our report, and that's very easy to do on the Home tab here. I'll go over to Text Box, and it gives me a nice little text box there. I'll drag that up, resize it a little bit. Oops, where'd we go? There we are. Now I want to call this, well first of all I want to make it big. We'll put it at 40. That's pretty nice and big. I think that's a decent font, decent size. Let's make it bold as well. And we'll center this. We'll call it Project Management Dash Board. And of course I'm going to set my text color to white. So I'll select all of that and say text color white. Now over in our formatting tab I have background. I'm going to turn that on. I'll set it to my darkest blue to match the slicer and transparency down to zero. And that's it. We've created a Power BI dashboard using data extracted from Jira with the Iona FX Business Intelligence Export Tool, which is available on the Atlassian Marketplace. Thanks for watching. Bye.